Daniela Kirby uh, from Beam Productions. I'm currently standing with the famous Steve Parrish. So my first question is, why are you famous? Well, yeah, that's a very, very good question. I've never been asked it before. I guess it's because I've been a, a bit of a fool over in my life. I've got into all sorts of trouble and problems and pranks that I've been doing and everything else. And it was Barry Sheen, who was my teammate in 77 through to 79, he said, if Steve Parrish spent as much time preparing his bikes as he did the pranks and the jokes that he did, he'd be world champion about five times. Okay. Um, but <laughs> I've um, been racing uh, for a long, long time. I'm now celebrating 48 years without having a proper job, which oh. I think is pretty good at going, actually. Cunningly, I've stayed out of having a proper job. And I started off racing amateur racing, went into professional motorcycle racing, went into running a team, went into uh, commentary work, then I yeah. ended up racing trucks for about 10 years, won five world championships racing trucks, and I'm now still involved with uh, commentaries and going to lovely events like we're here in South Africa. So I don't even know why I'm famous, but apparently I am a little bit, which is great at times, but can be embarrassing at other times. Like shooting TVs. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you've been watching that, things like that, haven't you? Yeah, I, 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 and, and the other thing is I have a theatre show called The Mad Tour, okay. which uh, is hosted by my daughter, and it's uh, the MAD stands for My Adolescent Dad. My daughter, bless her, is a, we get on really well, but she moved to live in Switzerland, so I didn't have a host. So my wife, Michelle, came to host the shows, and we kept oh. the MAD because it now stands for My Arsehole Darling. Oh. So, yeah, yeah, so it all works out. Okay. I like your wife a little yeah, more yeah, than yeah. I like you. Well, I, most people do actually, <laughs> and they say I'm hard to dislike but worth the effort. That's oh, the thing. Oh, but yeah, yeah I, I'm just blessed really. I've had a wonderful life doing what I love doing. Uh, and I think if you can end up making a living out of your hobby, you're a very lucky person. And so I am. There you go. Really I agree cool. with you 100 yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah. Now tell me how do you feel about being in South Africa? What's your experience been like? Well I've been now to South Africa, I'm gonna say probably five or six times. I first came over here racing in the Grand Prix at Kalami, okay. riding a uh, you know, 500 Yamaha here and did that. I then came back here, uh, I did a couple of times at Carl Army, then I came back, believe it or not, racing trucks here. We raced trucks Damn. at Carl Army and then we went down to Cape Town to race there. That was part of the Mercedes-Benz program and I came over doing that. And then this is my third time here for the CSRA doing this. So I've been here a number of times. No, actually I tell another lie, I've been here a bit more than that because I have a very good friend called Corky Ballington who was a uh, motorcycle world champion and he invited out, me out here for a holiday. But I love the country, uh, it's got everything you could ever want. It's got sun and heat and warmth and sea and nice wine and it's got everything going for it. So I really enjoy coming out here. And the best bit is it's an easy flight, 10 hour flight, two hour time distance. Get on a plane at London Heathrow at six o'clock at night or seven o'clock at night, end up here and have your breakfast. So it works perfectly. And I believe going from ice cold to scorching oh, heat. Wow. So tell me, what, do, what was your day like? What did you do today? Yeah, well, as I left, uh, Michelle and I, we left and it was minus three degrees when we woke up in the morning. There was frost and snow everywhere. We got on a plane and we arrived here and I think... I'll just announce that squeaking noise that you can hear right now is a garage shutting over there. So if you can hear a noise, you should always mention it. But, excuse me, could you stop doing that anymore? Right, we're back on it. Um, and we landed here in Johannesburg and I think it's 28... Oh, hang on. We've got every garage door being closed here right now, so this noise could be very, very loud. I don't know if we want to cut or do we carry on. They know what we talk, what's yeah. going on, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Well, they know we have Pakisa. Yeah, we're at Pakisa now. We've had a fantastic day here. The sun's shone. I've seen some fabulous racing. Came here to race a bike, but ended up in the commentary booth because the commentator didn't turn up. So I ended up doing that. And that was all going really smoothly until we had a bit of a power cut. And then we had no live timing and screens and so, I pretty much made it all up. Okay. And nobody seems to have known that I did that. <laughs> okay, so first of all, do you get power cuts in UK? Not very often, actually. If you get a thunderstorm and stuff like that, you get them, but very rarely, to be perfectly honest. No, I guess, um, I don't know, we've got, I can't believe that South Africa, with all the sun, you don't have many solar panels. We have so many solar panels and wind farms and everything else like that. And it's so, ice cold. Yeah. Um, I, I sometimes tell my wife we've had a, pole, uh, a power cut because she's using too much electric and I turn it off. <laughs> That's brilliant. I'm going to try this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so one last thing. What was the event? How do you feel about the classic TT? 
love it. I, I've always loved classic bikes. Um, I've been involved, of course, in modern day bikes with riding in MotoGP or, or 500 Grand Prix. But the, the older I get, and I'm pretty old, I think the classic bike series has so much more camaraderie. It has so many different bikes. You can walk from this garage that's making a loud noise closing its gate now to that garage there and you can see every different type of motorcycle. There's even a Vincent motorcycle here. This is an old British bike. There's Nortons, there's Honda Suzuki's from all eras. They make wonderful noises and the people that ride them are maybe a little more mature. Most of them are, not all of them. There's some really good young kids here, but they know how to live their lives. They enjoy themselves. I'm about to, and I'm smelling it like you are. There's a braai being cooked right now, which I'm going to go over to. So I think it's the atmosphere that I love about the CSRA. They know how to live their lives and enjoy themselves. And that's what life's about. Fair enough. And then tell me Red Star Raceway, will you be racing or will you be commentating? I don't even know till I get there. I've no idea. I might be just giving out the prizes with you, but um, I'll do my research a little bit more. But at Red Star, I'll definitely have the RG500 Suzuki there. I'll be out parading it at some point and I think I'm going to be in the commentary booth, but hoping there's not a power cut. Fair enough. Guys, there you have it. If you guys want to come find us, if you will be racing or will you be commentating, make sure you guys go to Red Star Raceway on Saturday to watch the most epic race you will see this year. Guys, we'll see you all soon. And just very quickly, if you want any merchandise or any books or anything else, steveparishracing.com is my website. There you have it. Go check it out. Like immediately.